However, Sarah wants more money. Hmm. A raise just means more money. Cha-ching! Right? We have some pissed off people here, right? Hello, and welcome to this lesson. Today we're going to talk about an idiom, actions speak louder than words, and a picture. Together we're going to create a conversation. And we're going to talk about vocabulary, see other pictures, and talk about everything. <laughs> All right. The first thing we need to do is talk about the idiom. Make sure we understand what it means. Actions speak louder than words is what someone does is more important than what they say. So actions, things they do, are more important than their words. If someone tells you every day that tomorrow they're going to give you some money, and then tomorrow comes and you're like, and they're like, oh, I'll give it to you tomorrow. Okay, then tomorrow comes again, and they're like, oh, I'll give it to you tomorrow. So basically what they're saying, if people don't do what they say, we can't believe them. Someone keeps telling you they'll give you money, but they never do, and they say they will, they will, but they never do it. The perfect situation for actions speak louder than words. Let's see an example. Sam always promises to bring caviar on New Year's Day, but he never does. Actions speak louder than words. So Sam likes to talk. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do everything. But later on, where's Sam? <laughs> Nothing happens. All right. So the word promises. Let's talk about what that means. All right. So a promise. If you look at the pictures. Let's see the definition of promise. A promise is an agreement that you will do something or that something will happen. So if I tell you, like in this first picture here, we can see it says job applications, the job application, the people are shaking hands. If this guy says, great, I'm going to be the hardest worker you've ever seen, but then he doesn't even come to work or he's late or he's lazy, then he broke his promise, right? So a promise, once again, is an agreement that you will do something or that something will happen. In this picture, this guy is probably promising, making an agreement that he will be a good worker. He'll be responsible. He'll do what's necessary. And the boss asks him to do something, he'll do it. In this picture over here, this is called a pinky swear. Let me type it in here. It's called a pinky swear. And your pinky is this finger right here, the little one. So we have two pinkies. And when two people make an agreement, it's probably with kids, right? Oh, we'll be best friends forever. Or, you know, I'm going to do this for you. Pinky swear? Yes. And then they go like this. And you can see in the picture where they hook their pinkies together. So they hook their two smallest fingers together. And they promise something. If you say, I swear... It's another way to say, I promise. So you could say, I swear to do whatever, right? I swear to do it. I promise to do it. In this picture down here, we have two people. I would say it's two men shaking hands. One has a business suit on. The other one has maybe a sweatshirt, long sleeve shirt. And I'm not sure of the location, but they're shaking hands. So they're probably agreeing on something. Or they could be just greeting each other. But if they've been around, they've been talking for a while, maybe it's a contract. Okay, my company's going to work with your company. Okay, sounds good. We can agree on that price. Then they shake hands. And one, per one person is promising to do something else. Okay, back to the conversation or the example. Okay, so Sam always promises. He says he'll do it. He says he's going to bring caviar. What is caviar? Oh. I think we look at pictures, great. So caviar is fish eggs. And I'm not sure, 
I may have had caviar. I'm not quite sure. I had fish eggs. I guess that would be caviar. So it's considered a delicacy. And a delicacy is something that people think is very nice and they're willing to probably spend a lot of money for. So if you have very high quality caviar, uh, I think Russia makes, they produce a lot of caviar and, and people are willing to pay a lot of money for these fish eggs, right? And it looks like they put them on bread and it looks like there's butter and they put caviar on top. Never tried it. I would be willing, I guess. Over here we have a tray, like a, a big dish with different kinds of caviar, right? Looks like on top there's a orange or a red one with the eggs and then below there are some black eggs. And here we have a spoon that's full of caviar, maybe it was scooping it up. And over here it's like a little treat, I don't know, cream or some sort of uh, pastry thing. And they put fish eggs, the caviar on top. So this is caviar, fish eggs. All right. So Sam says he's going to bring caviar on New Year's Day. Hmm, let's make sure we understand New Year's Day. Here's some pictures for New Year's Day. So New Year's Day is just January 1st, right? First of each year. All right, so this would be different from New Year's Eve, which is actually the December 31st of, you know, whatever year. New Year's Eve means the night before. If someone says Christmas Eve, it would be the night before, right? Christmas is usually on December 25th, so Christmas Eve would be on December 24th. So New Year's Day, once again, is January 1st of each year, and New Year's Eve would be the day before, December 31st. And on New Year's Day, we usually say Happy New Year, right? And we have fireworks and Happy New Year. People like to party and they have hats and champagne and glasses. And they talk about, you know, I promise I'm going to do this the new year. I'm going to improve and all this great stuff. Okay, so this was the example. Sam always promises to bring caviar on New Year's Day, but he never does. Actions speak louder than words. In other words, we need to pay more attention to what Sam does and not just what he says, because he talk, 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 talk. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the main part of the lesson, the conversation. And I think first we need, ooh, yes, nice. We need to talk about the picture. So I see two people. I see Sarah and I see Fred. And Sarah is looking directly at Fred and Fred is looking directly at Sarah. Sarah is sitting down, Fred is standing, and he's leaning over a laptop computer that's on the table. Sarah has her elbows on the table, and her hands are together uh, with her fingers bent a little bit, like this maybe, and then it's close to her face. So let's talk about Sarah first. Sarah has uh, longer hair. It's kind of a mix between brown and maybe blonde hair. And it looks to me like her hair is kind of messy. Maybe she's been working a long time or she just didn't really fix up her hair that morning. I don't know. I am not a hair expert. All right, so Sarah has an earring, if we look real close, one earring in her right ear, probably in her left ear, maybe in her left ear. We just can't see it. It's covered with hair. Sarah has a ring on her left ring finger. So the fingers are a thumb, index finger, middle finger, ring finger, and pinky finger. Remember the pinky swear? Mm, right? Okay, so she has a ring on her left middle finger. All right? okay, uh, her shirt is gray. It's a long sleeve shirt, maybe kind of like a, a thin sweater, or a long sleeve, kind of like a turtleneck. A turtleneck is something that comes up higher, like this, like a, a long neck. But that's not too long. It's uh, kind of a medium, maybe a mock turtleneck, I think they call it, where it's not so long at the neck. All right, so she's looking at Fred. I'd say she looks pretty serious. Uh, Fred is standing once again. Looks like he has short hair, kind of like mine. All right, Fred. He has a light brown shirt on, uh, like 
like a, a light brown, I guess we could say. It's long sleeve and it's a button up shirt, right? And when it's a button up shirt, they usually have buttons down here at the cuffs. The cuffs are just this part of the sleeve. It's long sleeve, there are buttons there. He is pointing, kind of like he's pointing a gun, but he's probably just pointing and referencing something. Looks like he's pointing at the computer or maybe a document, something that's on the table. Looks like Sarah is quiet. She's not speaking. Her lips are together and she's focused on Fred. However, look, however it looks like Fred is speaking. His mouth is open a little bit. Okay, so let's see what they're actually talking about. Here we go. Sarah starts the conversation. All right. Come on, boss. I told you I'll have the project done by the end of the week. Fred, come on, Sarah. <laughs> Actions speak louder than words. You're always late. Sarah, well, you promised me a raise. Actions speak louder than words. Fred, I promise you this. If the client is pissed off again, I'm going to terminate you. Ooh, juicy. Okay, so the idiom is actions speak louder than words. We're going to find the idioms in the conversation and make them bold. So it's easy to see them and we can see how they're used in the conversation. All right, let me take a quick check. All right, okay. So now I'm gonna say the conversation at regular speed. The conversation between Sarah and Fred. Sarah, come on boss. I told you I'll have the project done by the end of the week. Fred, come on Sarah. Actions speak louder than words. You're always late. Sarah, well, you promised me a raise. Actions speak louder than words. Fred, I promise you this. If the client is pissed off again, I'm going to terminate you. Hmm, interesting. Okay, one quick thing. I was thinking this could be a situation where he says, gonna, I'm gonna terminate you, but... I thought again, and since he's looks like he's the boss and she is his worker, more of a, a formal situation, especially if he's talking about the possibility of terminating her, right, he would probably say I'm going to, because that's a bit more formal and respectful. Okay, more formal English. All right, so it kind of seems like Sarah may not be the best employee. She's always late. And Fred seems very aware of this. However, Sarah wants more money. Hmm. Let's talk about some of the vocabulary in this conversation. All right. So first, the word project. All right. Let's jump over to some pictures. Great. Okay. So project. Here is the definition of the word project. All right. So a little bit long definition, but we'll get through it. No worries. So a project is an individual or collaborative effort that is carefully planned and designed to achieve a specific goal. So individual means working by yourself, one person. Collaborative means two or more people, right? You could have a team, right? So you could say these two women down here are collaborating on a project. They're working together. Maybe the person right here is they're doing an individual project. They're working by themselves on their computer and their tablet. So a project, like a business project or something that you create and you have a plan and this is how you're gonna do it because you have a goal. You have something that you want to finish, complete or achieve, okay? In this picture up here, it looks like we have maybe a group meeting. We have one, two, three, four, five people, I think. And they're talking probably about something that's on this paper. Maybe they're architects, who knows? Or maybe they're designing a building or a game or software or something like that. But they're talking about the project, right? In this one, 
This project probably has something to do with statistics, numbers, sales, uh, stuff like that. And it's on a laptop computer. We have a pie chart. We have a bar chart right here and more information up here. All right. And down here, we just have a nice desk that's very neat. Maybe it's before they started working on their project. Because after you start working on your project, you probably don't worry about being so neat anymore. Okay, so we have in the middle, we have a calendar. On top, we have a planner. It has a calendar inside, but it's kind of like a mobile calendar where you can write all your stuff, right? Your appointments, your notes, stuff like that. And there's a pen right here. There is a notepad right here that's standing up. Uh, a cup of coffee, a clock, and it looks like it's 7 o'clock. Because it's brighter out, I'm going to say 7 o'clock in the morning. There's a newspaper. The title of the newspaper is Business. This looks like uh, some file folders where you can put documents inside. This thing just looks like maybe a mini plant or decoration for the desk. We have a cell phone. Looks like ear earphones or earbuds. Another pen. Another pen. Another cup of coffee and the laptop. And down here, some more. Uh, another document with some numbers on it. So that's a full desk. It's very neat right now. Like I said before, once they start, it probably won't be so neat. Back to the conversation we go. All right, so we just talked about the word project. Let's talk about end of the week, all right? And since I'm American, I'm gonna tell you what end of the week means in a work environment in America. So we have end of, end of this week, and let's see, and the conversation was end of the week. All right, so we'll change this. So it's end of the week. So in, in the USA, let me just copy and paste here. In the USA, the work week is usually Monday to Friday, right? So the week starts, the work week starts on Monday, ends on Friday, and people usually have Saturday and Sunday off. That's especially if they work for like a big company, they work for the government, stuff like that. So end of the week means Friday. Means Friday, right? So if it's end of the week, Specifically, when you're in the work environment, it's going to be the end of the work week. So Friday, maybe Friday at closing time or late in the day on Friday, maybe 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 5 p.m., depending on the office hours. But end of the week is Friday. <laughs> okay, so we have a planner. We have a calendar, right? And it looks like this guy has, he's looking at a calendar uh, with appointments and different things to do that's on his phone and we have another calendar over there right so when come on boss I'll to I told you I'll have the project done by the end of the week she's saying you know I'll have it done by Friday uh, that you know uh, it'll be done I swear right okay let's see uh, Sarah says well you promised to give me a raise right you told me that you would give me a raise. Let's talk about the word raise. All right. So a raise just means more money. Cha-ching, right? So a different way to say raise could be an increase in salary. You could say earning more money. You could also say higher pay, right? So either way, we're talking about an increase in money. It could also be an increase in benefits. Maybe you get more stock options, a better medical plan, or I don't know. But it's usually something with the money, right? Here we have stacks of coins, uh, and it's growing, right? Smaller, bigger, biggest. And out of the top, we have a little plant. So the idea is that the money is growing. This one, the guy's walking up the steps or the, the steps in his company, and he's probably doing work, and they're paying him more, raising his salary. Here we just have some cash, which is rolled up. Uh, looks like $20 bill, maybe a $100 bill there. I think maybe that is a $1 bill. But they're just rolled up, and we got money. I put this picture in because it's kind of interesting. <laughs> you have coins on the side. Uh, on the bottom are a bunch of papers, maybe like data analysis sheets, I don't know, or some sort of reports. In the background, you have some coins and some cash money. And here you have a calculator, which is put 
up on its end, right? So it's kind of like that. And there's some numbers on the screen of the calculator. But on top of the calculator, there is a spoon. And the spoon is balanced by a potato <laughs> and some coins. So the coins are in the scoop part of the spoon and the potato is stuck or the spoon is stuck into the or the back part of the spoon is stuck into the potato and it's balancing on the calculator. I thought that was an interesting picture. <laughs> okay, back to the conversation. All right. Let's see. Fred says, I promise you this. If the client is pissed off again, I'm going to terminate you. I think we should talk about the word or the phrase pissed off. What does pissed off mean? You're about to find out. All right. We have some pissed off people here, right? So other ways to say pissed off, angry, upset, mad, displeased, irritated, right? So let's see, we'll put some space in between these, maybe. These are different ways to say pissed off, right? Something is not going well. In the conversation, I think Fred said, if the client is pissed off again, I'm going to terminate you. So he said again, right? So in the past, Sarah probably has done something that the, comp the client, the customer was like, ah, right? So Fred doesn't want that to happen again. So if the client is angry, if the client is upset, if the client is mad, if the client is displeased or irritated, you'll be terminated. All right, some of these pictures, this guy makes me think of like a vampire or a werewolf with some big teeth there. This lady, she's coming from fiery, fiery hell and she's gonna attack us. <laughs> she's pissed off. This kid, he's pissed off. He's got his eyebrows scrunched together and he's, right? This guy, he looks like he's probably yelling about something or talking loudly. He's upset, pissed off. This lady, she's got her fist up and she's going to slam him down because she's upset. She's pissed off. Maybe she's really displeased. Hmm. All right. So pissed off means angry, upset, mad, displeased, irritated. Something is wrong. Okay, and another vocabulary word, the last one we're going to cover in this conversation is, I'm going to terminate you. Hmm, what does terminate mean? All right, to terminate. All right, in this situation, we're not talking about the Hollywood movie where terminate or maybe like a mobster, an assassin, where they terminate you and they kill you. No, this <laughs> Fred is not going to terminate. He's not going to kill Sarah. We're talking about the work relationship, right? So other ways to say you're terminated, you could say you're fired. As in, you know, you can't work here anymore. Uh, I'm letting you go. As in, I'm letting you go out the door. <laughs> you can't work here anymore. Uh, we're, we're eliminating your position, right? So your position, maybe you were an accountant and we're getting rid of that position. So you're fired, you're terminated, right? So these are different ways to say you're terminated. Uh, we could change that to make it so there, it's a statement, right? So you're terminated. And all of these are complete sentences by themselves. These are just different ways to say that a boss is doesn't want to keep an employee and they want them to get out and not work here anymore. You're terminated. You're fired. I'm letting you go. We're eliminating your position. So in this picture, it looks like this person over here would probably be the boss. And this person just got fired. Maybe they got caught stealing money from the company or something. And she says, I'm letting you go. <laughs> I don't trust you. All right, this one, the boss looks like we're at his desk and he's explaining to us why you're fired or why we're fired or why he's eliminating our position. Over here, it looks like they're at maybe a restaurant or a coffee shop and the boss is going through his notes explaining to the lady 
Why? She's fired! She's terminated! <laughs> okay. So, this was the conversation. I'm going to repeat the conversation one more time at regular speed. And the target idiom for today is actions speak louder than words. Okay, here we go. Last time. Sarah, come on, boss. I told you I'll have the project done by the end of the week. Fred, come on, Sarah. Actions speak louder than words. You're always late. Well, you promised me a raise. Actions speak louder than words. Fred, I promise you this. If the client is pissed off again, I'm going to terminate you. I'm going to fire you. I'm going to let you go. Okay, so we have Sarah the employee and Fred the boss, and things might not be going very well for Sarah, especially if she doesn't start finishing her projects on time. Okay, so today in this lesson, we took an idiom, actions speak louder than words, and we took a picture. And we combined them to create a conversation. And we also talked about the vocabulary, project, end of the week, a raise, pissed off, <laughs> and you're terminated. And we talked about pictures and the different vocabulary from the conversation. Okay. All right. I had a great time teaching this lesson. Remember, master your idioms, master your English. Have a wonderful day.